Hey everybody, before we get started, I just want to remind you this episode is brought to you by our patrons like Adam DeHarp, Ahago Comics, Architect 10, Blacklist OG, Carlos, Qua, Jeremy Vasquez, Kylie Dutton, Legendary Boss Hunter, Liam Kessler, Rogue Robin, Shiny P, Some Guy Named Bob, Sutter Sun, 0424, 723, and Zach Reed. If you like what we do and want to see us do more, consider supporting us on Patreon. You can get access to episodes early and lots of other goodies, and it helps us out. Thank you for your support, everybody. At last, we will reveal ourselves to the Jedi. At last, we will have revenge. Hey, everybody, welcome back to... Another video on this channel about Star Wars Legion by Fantasy Flight Games. Uh, hopefully that, like, five seconds there, A, doesn't get me in trouble with Daddy Disney, and also, B, was legible. I thought it would be funny to, like, throw in a mall quote in the video about mall, but I'm like, man, this is so quiet. Was that really that quiet? I feel like it was more distinct in the film, the movie film. Anyway, mall expansion, operative, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, we'll run through all the basic intro stuff. It's been exactly a week since I... Did my Anakin video when they released the Anakin preview, and we're back for Maul, just as predicted. Also note, this is Darth Maul and Sith Probe Droids. We'll talk about them, too. They combine the graphic into one graphic, so it'll all be one slide. Yay, me. It'll be really long. Yay. Nah, it's fine. Everything's fine, guys. Videos that are over 10 minutes do better. Actually, I think it's like 8 minutes from because of mid-rolls or whatever. But anyway, anyway, anyway. I'm not going to linger too long in the intro. Darth Maul, Probe Droids, whole thing. We're not going to talk a lot about upgrades because they haven't really revealed anything new in there. Uh, I'll mention it when we... Actually, no. I won't mention it when we get to it. I'll just say now. Uh, it looks like we're getting stuff like Seize the Initiative, Anger, Fear, uh, Offensive and Defensive Stance, and Offensive Push. That's five? Is that everything? Let me make sure there's nothing else mentioned in the article. But yeah, it's not anything brand new that looks like. You got Offensive Stance, Push, Anger... Fear, seize the initiative. Yeah, uh, it's all the ones they mentioned. So it doesn't sound like they've got anything brand new to preview in there. Mostly it's on the unit stuff, and he's pretty good. So let's go ahead and jump into that part. Alrighty, so here we are. Maul and Sith probe droids. Let's start with Maul. The impression of Precious. I know that while well, the pack is called Darth Maul and stuff, uh, they do actually just call him Maul unique in the uh, card setup. Uh, a lot of people are predicting this is so that there can be a future Scum Commander Maul, which I am not averse to. I know they've talked about wanting to do that sort of stuff, and they've been planning some Mandalorian-type stuff. Hopefully, we get some, maybe we get some announcements soon? I don't know. They've probably delayed their whole production thing because of the thing. And y'all should be way more understanding about that and more concerned about real shit in your life. But uh, we yell about how there's not enough plastic spacemen. Anyway, Darth Maul. Technically just Maul. Uh, that's not going to get not confusing for me. Sorry, the expansion pack is called Darth Maul, but the unit's Maul. Anyway, he's an operative... You get one of him. He is a trooper. Pretty normal stuff. He's come, clocks in at 160 points, same as Anakin baseline, eh, which sounds about right. Um, I think he's got some interesting options, but he and he's got some power moves, but there are some costs and, and kind of like timing weaknesses to this. But he's got six wounds, three courage, red defense. Pretty standard at this point for big beater uh, operatives and commanders. You know, he's got as much wounds as a full full squad of guys. Three courage. Has a red defense, pretty typical. Speed 2. No surge, either way, um, for reasons. So for keywords, he has jump 1, pretty standard. Deflect, also pretty standard. Why he doesn't have, uh, you know, surge block. He gets that if he gets a dodge token. He's immune to pierce, as a lot of Jedi are. And he has the new keyword they talked about, Geo Mastery. So a lot of people were wondering about this one. Uh, yeah, so what this does is, while you are wounded, you can perform an additional activation action during your activation. Limit to move actions. So... Uh, if Maul has a wound, he has a little wound token, he gets three actions per per turn, per activation, basically. But he can still only per perform two move actions. Because um, you can perform more than one move action. I'd have to double check. I think you can still only perform one attack action. I think that's in the, in the rules reference right now. Um, even so, that means he basically gets a relentless style effect. But also he can, you know, uh, he can move... Aim, hit, move, dodge, hit, you know, move, aim, aim, or move, aim, hit, aim, aim, hit, whatever. Like, uh, any action you can for multiple times he can do, this just gives him a lot more flexibility of movement at the low, low cost of starting to chew into his wounds. This is something that not a lot of people are talking about. They're talking about how good Geo Mastery is, but uh, barring certain circumstances of your own, you can only activate it once he starts taking hits. Now, obviously, he's a very scary guy, right? You know, uh... We'll talk about his offense in a little bit, but you can see it in the slide, hopefully. He 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 has some damage output, which is especially pretty scary with uh with his Geo Mastery, like a lot of people are already saying. 
He basically needs to be run with uh, Saber Throw, because he doesn't have an inherent ranged attack. But uh, the way Saber Throw works is you can all you can just use your four red dice for Saber Throw with this, and keep Impact and Pierce too. Right? Very scary. Very dangerous. Um, though, obviously, Jedi are still immune to Pierce, so there's that. But there's... There's an interesting thing where he he can't do that until your opponent decides him a wound. So your opponent basically decides when you clock Geo Mastery normally. Um, there are some circumstances which do assign wounds, but I don't think the Separatists have anything. Like, Vader can do new ways to motivate them and stuff, but I, I don't know if there's any inherent self-wounding abilities out there yet. Uh, unless that isn't what Anger does, right? Anger is, isn't Anger just when you have... Wounds. Yeah, when you suffer one or more wounds, gain an aim token. So obviously, Anger's another solid choice on him. It's coming in the pack, probably. It's only five points. Gives him free aims when he uh, when he takes a wound, which you want to be taking wounds. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting concept. Like, it makes him very powerful, but like I said, it requires your opponent to basically turn you on and activate you, which means that if you go for a first turn move or whatever, uh, which you're going to have some interesting counterplay when we talk about his... Uh, command cards in a second, but that means that, say, you go first, alright, Maul needs to move into position, he's going out, uh, your opponent just decides to blast him with everything he's got first turn, which can totally happen because Maul has a lot of mobility and stuff and things you need to worry about. Um, he's called the Impatient Apprentice, right? You need to not be impatient with Maul. If you are, your opponent will just focus fire and gun him down, and he's dead. Uh, or try and, like, block him up with some tankier units, like, I think he's got enough offense that it's hard to tank, but it's probably possible. There's probably some combinations that can be fairly resilient and actually, like, job up Maul, prevent him from doing too much fluidity of movement. Because he doesn't get disengaged, is a thing, right? So, there's definitely a decent amount of counterplay, basically, to Maul. Like, you think he's going to be really good and he's going to rip ass, and then you're going to be like, oh, wait, I don't have any wounds. That, that means I can't do all my crazy stuff. And then you just get murdered because you thought you could be crazier than you could be. You have to be careful with when you do certain things, okay? Other otherwise, you're going to be in trouble. So, uh, we alluded to his weapon. Yeah, I definitely got to fix this slide, sorry. Sorry, just noticing there's a couple errors in the slide. They're, they'll be fixed by the time this gets to you. Anyway, the double-bladed lightsaber is eight dice, like they said. Four reds, four whites. So, without... It's basically four red dice. Um, but it has the option, you know, you, he comes with offensive stance, he's got those training slots, you could easily go for the, you know, double aim, reroll all his white dice and hope for more, but he's got five, he's got four red dice, impact two, pierce two, pretty reliable damage output, can occasionally go up to that cap max of eight, you know, um, this makes him good with saber throw, this makes him good with, uh, offensive stance, uh, tenacity also is another Really easy choice on him. Gives him a fifth red die when he's wounded, which he wants to be wounded anyway. So he's got that. Though obviously you got to watch out when you're doing offensive stance. That means that you uh, cannot activate deflect because you can't spend dodge tokens to get your surge. So you got to be careful with what you're dealing with there. Um, if you're wondering, by the way, about counterplay, I think uh, mirror matches with Dooku probably is the best because Dooku can remove the immunity to pierce and can push damage through. He can poke and pop at Maul. Combined with enough high-level firepower with some other attacks, he might actually be able to get in there with some damage and whittle Maul down faster than he thinks he can whittle back, basically. Anyway, it's a it's a solid pool, but it is melee only. That means you're probably going to be using one of those for Saber Throw, just because you have the action economy with Julio Mastery to do it. Uh, that leaves his second force power up in the air. A lot of people are talking about you can do some shenanigans with Push. Um, another option may be simply to do Anger, so you can do that, I got a wound, I got a name token I want. You know, you got four white dice, he probably wants some aim tokens, stuff like that. You could go for the fear build and demoralize your enemy as you power into range. Uh, those training slots are almost assuredly going to be off offensive, defensive stance, and probably tenacity. Heck, you could probably even skip offense, defense, and just go for tenacity. So you can, you know, if you get anger and tenacity, you can probably still get your aim tokens, and then you've got enough action economy to also get dodge tokens. Um... And then I think he's also coming with Seize the Initiative, as we mentioned earlier. That's another good one. Discard it. Activate him. Because he is an operative, and he may be out on his own. So you might have some weird position with issuing him orders so he can actually murder people. Again, um, active, well, he's separatist, so that makes sense. But activation control is very important for Maul. You want to pick 
when he's free, you want to know when you can activate your mall so you can use him to your best effect and not randomly have to either activate him before you can get Junior Mastery off or activate him way late by random and your opponent is just like, oh, there's a mall right here. We're just going to dogpile him and get rid of him. Because listen, six wounds is not invincible, even with red dice. Okay? Okay? It's a thing to think about. Uh, I think it's everything with Maul inherently. He's a very solid unit, big powerhouse, very mobile, uh, especially once we talk about his command cards. But, I, like I said, he has some, some weaknesses. Like, I, I, would, I would play him as if he actually had five wounds, right? Because you're going to want to be wounded to activate Geo Mastery and then probably synergize with Tenacity and all that stuff. So, don't don't play him as fast and loose as you think you are, unless you're using him as a 160-point suicide bomb. Not really, but more like almost probably 200, so you gotta watch out for that. That's gonna be expensive. Um, though I bet there will be plenty of uh, Tactroid Maul lists. But, yeah. Just, just be careful not to go too fast and loose with Maul. He'll probably be very rewarding, because he can power, power through enemies and is a real boss slayer. He will really fuck up the other guy's commander. We also have the DRK-1, the Dark One, Sith Probe Droids. I just used DRK-1 Probe Droids in here. So these are a 35-point Special Forces unit. They have three minis on their little standees. They have one wound, one courage, white defense. Yeah, white defense, but you're separatists. You're used to it. Uh, so they've got their droid troopers. They've got about three wounds overall. Uh, now they do have Surge Hit, Surge Block. And that's pretty good. Their speed, too. Uh... And they have a comms slot. That's it. So we have keywords. First of all, new keyword, observe three. Uh, this is an action keyword. As an action, choose an enemy unit range one to three in line of sight. It gains three observation tokens. We have been told observation tokens are basically like semi-aim tokens. Um, observation tokens are on a unit. If a friendly unit attacks an enemy unit with observation tokens, they can spend the tokens to re-roll. Uh, I believe it's one for one, a single die. So you get three rerolls, you can spread out however you want on a guy. Um, can really help your action economy. They're detachment to maul, so... Actually, let me double check exactly how detachment works, just to be safe. Okay, so detachment, you know, with detachment can only be included if you include a maul. So you can only play probe, Sith probe droids if you play a maul. During deploy units, must be placed within speed one, height one of, the, of maul. Okay, and they can deploy with him if he does other stuff. Pretty basic, just wanted to make sure we covered all that. So, you can only use them if you have Maul on your list, and they appear at range 1 of Maul. Makes sense. They have Hover Air 1, so this is our first use of Hover Air, basically. Uh, it's basically speeder without the compulsory move. You ignore terrain of height 1 or lower when moving, uh, which is pretty good, especially because they have to be placed within height 1 of their leader. And they have good old Incognito. Um, enemy units beyond range 1 can't attack you unless you have attacked, defended, or performed an objective card action. So, basically... Um, so long as enemies don't get too close, these guys can linger behind your units, behind Maul, uh, move, observe, move, observe, you know, they're ignoring terrain, so they can probably cover most barricades and stuff, and they can't be attacked back while still offering offensive support to your army. Very good design. By the way, love the observe tokens. Um, we've been, ever since the shore mortars came out, and a lot of people are kind of annoyed by how fire support works, um, I, I... I think there's been some some wondering about actual indirect fire. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if in, in indirect, like true indirect fire attacks, um, were possible with observed tokens. You assign an, an opponent an observed token, and then you can attack them even if you don't have line of sight of them um, by spending one of their observed tokens. Kind of like how there are alternate ways you can spend aim or dodge tokens, right? Wouldn't be shocked if that eventually shows up as a keyword, but not right now. Uh, their attack is they have the Micro Stun Blaster. So, as is pretty typical on your little droid buddies, whatever form they take, uh, it's a... Oops. I accidentally almost grabbed my headphones. Uh, it's a melee slash ranged attack. It's, you know, range 1 to 2 when it's not melee range. It's too white and suppressive. Remember, these guys do have multiple minis. They're actually a three-strong unit. So, uh, they'll be rolling up to six white dice with Surge Hit, um, and technically, I, as far as I know from the reminder text, it's not in the RNG, but it, it looks like you can still observe, uh, and then attack yourself. So if they're at range two, you could, like, if an enemy comes within range two of these guys to, like, try and be like, oh, those probe dudes are really annoying me, I'll get rid of them, then they start to approach so they can attack through incognito, 
Um, you could totally first move, observe three observation tokens at range, uh, at range two, micro stun blast or stun micro, however you want to do the grammar. I don't care. Who cares? It's just another one of them dumb hyphen buzzword things. Uh, and roll six white dice with three rerolls and search hit with suppressive. Uh, so while that means obviously they're going to lose their incognito effect, it does mean that when these things do actually, once the jig is up, basically, they do actually have a pretty nasty little attack that could cause some harm and will definitely cause some suppression tokens. And, you know, if it's the ranged form, that'll be double if it rolls at least one hit, which hopefully on six dice we will with surges, but maybe not. Hey, you're playing Separatist. You're used to rolling white dice. Um, so they can actually do a, do a little do a little bit of harm even when they're not observing. So they've got some different options in there. Fun little, fun little thing to do. Um, this is a really interesting use of Special Forces slot. Obviously, they're an attachment, so they have to come with Maul, and they benefit him too in general. But in general... In general, general, I should say. They're a really interesting use for your slot that have a lot of actual, like, special forces, spying, observing, sabotaging kind of potential. Uh, and it'll be really interesting to see how people play these. Um, they're not unique unique, but they're basically unique because I believe that you can only nominate one mall per detachment. Uh, I'd have to double check the RG on that. Somebody can let me know in the comments if that's true. Um, so I don't know if you can actually bring all three and if you wanted to, you'd have to buy three mall minis. Uh, but there's still a decent little package. Um, and if you can only run one, which I'm pretty sure that's how detachment works. And if it doesn't, then it should totally be how they make detachment works. And not a lot of people still complaining about shores and stuff. Um, but I am, like I said, reasonably sure that's how that works. You can only nominate one unit per detachment. But it's, it's not going to necessarily cut heavily into your slots. You can still run two BX sniper teams or full BX squads and do a set of programs. Okay. All right. Let us do command cards. So uh, as per the use, I will show just the slide with all three, but I've got the full images of all three. They exist, and I will read them. We already knew uh, this first one, the one pip. Let's cover it really quick. Duel of the Fates just activates Maul. Maul gains a dodge token and does gain disengage. When he's engaged in an enemy unit, that enemy unit cannot spend, aim, dodge, send by or surge tokens. So this is, as seen, this is the big shutdown of your enemy's Jedi, basically, or any of their big commanders. Oh, you cannot aim, dodge, stand by, or surge, so you can't modify at all. Um, and he has disengage, and if he's got wounds with Juyo, he can easily, like, move, boop, disengage, out, get out of there, kind of thing. Um, I do want to mention, because I did mention earlier when talking about his unit, he doesn't have a disengage inherently. These are not like Anakin's command cards. This is not permanent. The disengage is only for this turn. This means that if you don't pull off the win, uh, which you may not, because you, presumably with the dodge token, you're going to be, like, activating, flipping to defensive or something, right? Like, you'll you'll probably want to be able to use that dodge token, or you're not using offensive at all, but, you know. Like, it's entirely possible that you may whiff. Uh, this is probably where observation tokens come in, guys. Uh, and you don't actually kill the boss, and then you'll be like, then you scooch out, but... That means that they can probably still scooch up behind you and hit you next turn, and then Maul will be still stuck in until he kills. Um, so, like, you gotta, again, you gotta be careful. Don't be too eager to pop this. Wait until you're actually ready to do the kill. Um, and some people have been joking about how, uh, the way he is in the game, Obi-Wan couldn't win the Duel of Fates because of the way this card works. Um, well, the thing is, uh, Maul obviously popped this to kill Qui-Gon, and then he was done. It's gone. Um, and then Obi-Wan still had a good command card left kind of thing, right? Like, like that's if that's how you want to think about it, that's how you should think about it. So don't pop Duel of the Fates early. Pop it when you're ready to kill. Um, and, you know, you also probably will have to start some HQ uplink shenanigans or something because it only activates Maul. Uh, which you've got to be careful about that, right? Like, that's that's a, another key factor of Maul, is you have to remember the fact that you're playing, in, in, playing him in. Yeah, Maul can totally solo the enemy's commander, but if you don't, if you're not careful about managing the rest of your army, your idiot droids behind, you know, way, way behind him are going to be like, oh, what, did sh what should we do? Should we shoot him? Roger, roger. Like, you're going you're gonna to lose control if you're not careful. And obviously, I'm sure at this point most Separatist players know this. They're going to be like, yeah, duh, Omega, I'm prepared for that. But I'm just letting you know. This this is a thing, like, some people might decide to get into Separatists because of Maul, some people might, you know, be trying different things. Uh, you know, different commanders and operatives can really change how you play your army. I'm telling you not to forget your fundamentals, right? You still, you still need activation control and order control on everybody behind Maul, otherwise you're gonna, 
stab Anakin or Obi-Wan or whatever, and then the enemy's gonna have, you know, a Captain Rex and a whole shitload of clones left, or, you know, oh, you got, you got, you got Darth Vader, good job, now all those short troopers are gonna chew up your dumb, stupid droids kind of thing, right? Remember, you still gotta get objectives done. Killing commanders is important, um, Maul is very good at that, but you gotta do that, which is why I think also there's gonna be a significant amount of people who are gonna try and run, uh, Maul and a, and a full-blown commander, even though that's very expensive kind of list, right? Because they will want to make sure they've still got some backup for if Maul just, you know, flies like a missile into a wall and pops. So anyway, we knew Duel of the Fates already. So uh, let's talk about his real, his two-pip, his real two-pip. Um, this is the Phantom Menace. It activates Maul and one trooper. Um, basically, during this turn, Maul can't attack. Enemy units beyond range two of Maul can't attack him. So if you pop this in a mid-game, this is basically Maul gets a free shenanigans into enemy territory. Um, you can either use this to cut and run if Maul is in a bad way. If you've, you know, done your Duel of the Fates and realized, ah, shit, Mr. Maul didn't get out of here, you can skedaddle um, and, you know, get on out of there. Uh, or you can use it to kind of approach from cover, you know, sneak around. Enemy units can't do long range. Like, you can, you can have Maul haul ass through open territory and not need to worry about snipers. Even though, again, you want that one wound. You might want to see that one snip. Anyway. Um, the big deal here, though, is the divulge power. You can divulge this during your unit step. If you do it, uh, Maul gains infiltrate, which, remember, we talked about detachment. Those probe droids can detachment deploy next to Maul when he infiltrates. Um, might have to, in fact. But during the first round, uh, Maul and Sith probe droids can't perform objective card actions. So you can only use this to set up a murder spree. You cannot use it to sneak an objective bomb, which is actually really interesting. And again, I would remind everybody, you actually win the game through objectives. Um, unless you're playing skirmish, in which case... Uh, right? I'm not wrong. I remember. Isn't there a deathmatch-type skirmish? I think there is. Gosh, I need to, like, refresh myself on some stuff. Uh, sadly, sadly, I like skirmish. I like the idea of skirmish. I know it brings a lot of more people into the game because of the smaller format. I don't freaking remember all the skirmish rules, other than that there were some, like, objective... Some of the objective cards I went and ported over. Anyway, the other big thing about Phantom Menace is if you divulge it, you discard it. This is not a turn one play. You don't get to use this again. It's gone. You lose your two pip as Maul. Um, so you are literally down a command hand. Uh, so, it, again, there, there's a lot of risk reward with Maul. You can divulge this. You can totally teleport Maul, you know, deep strike him right on top of an enemy, play something like Duel of the Fates or his other card coming up, and just ram that guy into the enemy commander turn one. But that will, you know, that'll cause some chaos, cause some disruption, but will it win you the game? I don't know. You know, that's still pretty early. There's a lot of coordination and comeback which can be done from there. You gotta think about these things. Even so, it's a decent one, and I like the theming. Um, so let's talk about At Last. Uh, this is Maul's other one pip. It only activates Maul. Uh, and you're wondering, how does he have a one pip? You treat this card when building command hands if it has three pips. So this is his, this is his quote-unquote three pip. It has one pip for purposes of determining initiative, but it's got a three pip. Love the art on this, by the way. Um, so, uh, Maul gains an aim token, and Jedi Hunter, when he activates, he may suffer one wound. So here you go. This is your default key. Um, and I know I know, I kind of harped on the you can't deal wounds to yourself thing, and obviously it was a command card, but I wanted to emphasize like the strategy, because, again, you only get to do this once. And obviously, if you're going to do Divulge Phantom Menace, turn one at last, he does get aim and, de and Jedi Hunter, right? you can do the combo. You can suffer a wound. Um, I would argue probably, ideally, you don't want to if you can avoid the suffering a wound, but if you have to kickstart Julio, you can. Again, it only activates Maul, though, and remember, not permanent. He will lose Jedi Hunter after this, so you really want to use this to kill an enemy Jedi, ideally, to get that surge crit. Um, though, I don't know, there will be times when you may just play it last on yourself just to activate Julio because your opponent isn't activating it for you. Again, though, this just... This doubles down on my thought that you really need to remember to play Maul like he's only got five wounds, because either you've taken a wound and you don't need to do that part, or you're going to use that last to sacrifice a wound, right? Um, and actually, honestly, the fact that Jedi Hunter's not permanent, like, I get what they're going for. That's a little annoying, right? Like, if your opponent's not playing Force Sensitives at all, he doesn't get Surge Crit, and um, if he's not in a position to use it during this one turn, he doesn't get to keep it. So... I'm going to expect this is your probably your one two punch will be divulge, divulge Phantom Menace, turn one at last, boom, nuke. Um, that guy is probably whoever, whatever, whatever Globat wielder is on the other end of this, be it, you know, 
another Dooku, a Maul, if you're doing a mirror match, Luke's, Vader's, Obi-Wan's, Anakin's. They're probably, at the very least, going to be severely crippled, if not outright taken out. Uh, at which point you've got a Maul with a number of wounds standing in the middle of enemy territory, and he maybe he just gets obliterated. I don't know. I don't know if that's how you play Maul. Um, if he does live, though, obviously, you can, on your second turn, Duel of the Fates, either finish off that enemy, you know, finish off that enemy, cripple him in, or at least weather the blow, right, if they lived, and then just, better skedaddle, scooch on out of there. Um, all that does is require that you only activate Maul, and you spend a lot of your command cards on Maul. So, he's got a lot of potential, but again, I think there's that eagerness risk. If you go too crazy, you know, like, it's it's entirely possible that it'll hurt you. Um, I really like what they did, by the way, with the Infiltrate Divulge card. Like, it, it really focuses down that, no, no, Darth Maul is an assassin. He is a killing machine. Uh, I know they still call him just Maul in the card, but, like, th this version, the Darth Maul, uh, Expansion Maul, he will powerhouse into enemies, especially if they're Jedi, he will do a lot of damage, possibly take them out. If he rolls max damage and they don't get some blocks, um, they're done for, right? Like, obviously, they have immune pierce just like he does, and he doesn't cancel it unlike Dooku. So, they could always roll the hard six, but he he can still has a potential to, if he rolls max damage, to wipe out basically any infantry unit in the game, and I think even most armor, and he has impact too. Um, like, it, he, he will kill. He will kill. But... You need to be careful. You have to time it right. If you overextend, this is the thing I've always said in these videos, if you overextend or you misplay, Maul's going to be hanging out there with his double-sided double -sided dick in his hand and he's going to die. Um, I think he's going to do an aggressive splash onto the field, uh, but I also think that, yeah, a lot of people are going to be like, yeah, I'm also cool. Oh, I'm dead. So just learn from the cards. He's an impatient hunt. He's an impatient apprentice. Temper your own patience. Strike when ready. Um... Don't divulge all the time. Only do the infiltrate bomb if you think you can get your opponent. Like, if you think their list setup is going to have a head you can cut off um, and and watch out for it. And do remember that Duel of the Fates only works while you're engaged with enemies. Other guys, it's not a problem. Um, and yeah, be be careful about when you use all this stuff. Because like kind of like with Anakin, there's a certain amount of self-destructiveness in here. Uh, there's no permanency, so he doesn't have that kind of scaling risk reward that Anakin does. But... The fact that you can lose Disengage and lose Jedi Hunter, um, I think have that alternative kind of, like, risk-reward. Like, if you accidentally blow the turn, you do it. Um, or, you know, your opponent your opponent makes you, like, put the card back or something, and you lose those effects. You know, you can... You can have some bad times. Uh, and also, I don't, you know, Han still has that zero pip. I don't, I don't think that'd be a victory, but that would definitely be very rude if you're facing an army that involves Han and you're trying to, at last, and then Han just, sorry about the mess, you know, puts a couple chunks in you. At the very least, this is why I'm glad the wounding on at last is optional. Because if you somehow still get shot first, uh, cause there's also a lot of cunning. Maybe even more in the future, talk about that in a second. There's a lot of cunning out there you gotta watch out for. Uh, but yeah, Maul's really powerful with these command cards. It's, Operatives are always interesting because their command cards are usually self-serving, so it's really it's really neat to see. You got a lot of fun stuff here. Uh, like I said, I think he's going to be a good interest, and if you really want to bring the pain to enemy commanders, he is a good choice. Okay, let's talk about some other stuff. Okay, let's wind down with this final bit. Uh, yeah, because I already mentioned all the upgrades that'll be here. There's nothing new there. We already talked about them. We'll just move on to this bit, which is that uh, it was confirmed. I think it was in, there was a German event, a European event. Where they confirmed the leak, Lando and Callus are real. They are coming. We have seen box art and sculpt leaks. I decided to go with box art because sometimes sculpts look weird in the slides. Uh, but they're very nice sculpts. They're very good. Um, they're both. Com they are both commander expansions. We got some interesting stuff going on uh, here. Obviously, they look really good. Lando ha has been confirmed to have multiple cape options, as you need. Um, they're going with kind of a Sullust from. Battlefront 2 look, which is what I kind of mentioned. So, as a commander, this is definitely Gendo... Gen... Gendo? Gendo Calrissian. No. It's definitely General Calrissian from, like, Return, Battlefront 2 kind of inspiration. You know. Because um, if if EA's gonna use you for free inspiration, you can take free inspiration back from EA FFG. It's okay. Uh, and honestly, I mean, like, I know technically Lucasfilm owns it, but e EA is really milking the Raider that I think FFG did a decent amount of legwork getting off the boat so they could do it for, like, Armada and X-Wing and stuff. 
there there are friggin' raiders everywhere in Battlefront 2 and uh, Squadrons, which is really good, by the way. You should watch my stream archive of me playing the entire story mode of Squadrons. It's cool. Please watch it. Okay. Anyway, enough cross-promotion. Except maybe in the end card. Anyway. Anyway, anyway. So, yeah. Uh, looks like Lando's taking some, some cues from that. The, like, press release version, they haven't had an official article yet on their website, but the press kind of press release stuff, the distributors confirmed that uh, Lando will have a flaw card, so this will probably be either his gambling base or kind of this deal gets worse all the time kind of thing, like how he, he wants to be friends with Han and help him out and help Rebel stuff, but he has the he has other problems kind of a thing. We'll see how that works um, exactly. But they do kind of emphasis on his like luck and stuff, so I bet he's going to have the uncanny luck ability like Han does. It'll be really interesting to see him compared to Han, because I doubt he'll, he obviously won't have the synergy with Chewie and stuff that Han does, but it'll be interesting to see where he comes out on this kind of thing right you know will will han's advantage be that he's even though he's older as a commander um that he's got that synergy options with chewy who knows we'll see what happens um and then we've confirmed callus with multiple options probably going to be helmet no helmet um he's coming with seven upgrade cards no flaw card so one of those is probably the flip for his bow rifle which can be an electro staff or a gun um and then presumably he'll have, like, pistol and punching people as his default weapons. He is a commander, kind of interesting, but kind of makes sense because he definitely, especially in earlier seasons before progression of evil kicks in, uh, he definitely has those things. It is a little, I've heard some people say this, it is a little weird that, like, he gets in before maybe Grand Inquisitor, but maybe we're trying to diversify our units a little. Um, I would not be shocked if an Inquisitor in some form doesn't show up soon because we are going to need ways for rebels and imperials to get access to uh some of these newer upgrade cards like offensive and defensive stance shield etc without needing to cross by so either we're gonna need card pack two soon or we're gonna need some upgrades and also you know an inquisitor would be a perfect target for like a a mid-level operative or commander with a probably semi-crappy lightsaber you know you could go for like uh like two red three white or something or you know, do an Obi-Wan style rainbow, double rainbow kind of a thing, uh, you know, or even go for a Grievous Arsenal type thing, because technically the little spinny saber does have a, like, double bladed form that's all about intimidation and stuff. Um, but that would be a shoe in for Jedi Hunter as a keyword, you know, so he doesn't have normal surge crit, but you can Jedi Hunter him kind of thing. Be useful for certain things and kind of maybe give the Imperials options for when your opponent tries to teleport nuke a maul on top of your Palp or your Vader or something. So it's very interesting. I expect that Callus is going to have... They mentioned the word cunning in his description, so I don't know if he's literally cunning or not. Hopefully they go for that, because there are a lot of Imperials with cunning, and that would be good for them to get another one. Kind of a thing. As kind of a theme. Um, and help get his, like, outwitting. Um, other stuff like that. Maybe he has observe as a keyword, or can get it. Like, that would be an interesting uh, command, command card thing, because he's supposed to be an ISB agent who's, like, looking for dissent and deserters and stuff. Ironic, isn't it? Um, but, like, that would be an interesting command card ability for him to just go, oh, hey, is there an enemy unit at range 1 to 3? Hand them, like, you know, 2 or 3 observe tokens kind of thing. Uh, so, yeah, we'll have to see what they do with Callus. He will definitely have, like, the bow rifle will definitely be a gun and then also an electro staff kind of thing. Kind of probably like how the electro staff guard works. So he'll have some melee options. It just won't probably be as potent as lightsabers. Uh, though if he gets, like, immune pierce out of it, that would probably be a good deal. Any who's, uh, let's not make this linger on too long. Callus and Lando are coming. We'll do more when they give official announcements. We'll see what we can see about their, their stats and stuff. And we'll go from there. All right, we're going to wrap up the video now. We're going to get out of here, bing, bada, boom. You know, make sure to check out future Star Wars Legion videos. Don't know when we're going to get our next set of previews, but I appreciate you watching this one now. Like I said, go back and check out Anakin video if you haven't already. Check out my Star Wars Squadrons playthrough. Check out our Star Wars APs. Those are role-playing games, but they are based on Fantasy Flight's uh, RPG games. Check them out. They're Clone Wars themed. That's all the rage. Okay, I think that's all my regular shilling and other content. I will see you in the next Legion video or wherever else. Check out other videos on the channel. we got a lot of stuff. And I'll remind you to like this video if you liked it. If you have any comments, leave them in the comments section down below. What do you think about Lando and Callus being confirmed? What do you think about Maul? You know, am I harping too much on the fact that he is self-destructive and uh, could potentially brick? Or, you know, are you going to play him cautiously? Are you going to remember to play him smart? Let me know. You can also join our Discord. The link is as always in the channel description and in the on the channel page and in the video description. I guess that's also the channel description. Whatever. And of course, if you're new here and haven't already, please subscribe to the channel so you can always get our latest Legion videos. And even if you're already subscribed, hitting that bell, consider hitting that bell for notifications 
So you can always know when we post a new video. You can also join our channel in a link below or hit that join button. And of course, consider supporting us on Patreon. Like this is the front of the show. You could have gotten this episode early and lots of other goodies. And it really helps support us. All right, that's it. I will see you next time. Uh, goodbye, everybody. Da da da. -la.